Everyone wants to get on Wall Street. Everyone wants to be a part of it. Why? Well, it is one of the few places where a young, innocent kid from a small town, humble upbringings, can go to the biggest city, to the financial center of the world, where all money travels through, and make millions before their 25th birthday. Money is the driver of Wall Street, because money is power, money is status, but as evidenced by history, that driver, money, can also lead to greed corruption. So why is Wall Street corrupt? Why does it face its fair share of insane billion dollar fines, convictions, and scandals? Whether at the institutional level with the big banks and hedge funds, or at the individual level with its quote unquote wolves? What drives this cutthroat dog eat dog environment that sole focus seems to be on making the most money, getting the highest return, and nothing else? Why are people so easily corruptible when thrown into this environment? Simply put, what makes Wall Street, Wall Street? Why do people want to work on Wall Street? Is it because they love analyzing company financials and creating DCF valuations on them? Is it because they love 100 hour work weeks? Or is it because they love studying loads of technical definitions and memorizing a plethora of formulas and ratios to then use to analyze a bunch of numbers and charts? No, I mean, it's all about the money. Sure, you may be one of the few who actually enjoys the tasks that come with a job on Wall Street. More power to you. But most people work on Wall Street because that's where the money is. That's how you make a ton of money fast. Money is the main motivation on Wall Street. You take that high paying salary and potential for lucrative bonuses and promotions out of Wall Street, the majority of people are leaving. No one's working 70 to 100 hours per week for $50,000. It's all about the money. Money is their culture. Now you may be wondering, isn't money the center of every company's motivations? Isn't the goal of every company to maximize profits? Yes, you're right. But Wall Street is a bit different. Let me explain. Companies like Amazon, Apple, your local Italian restaurant, they need to improve a product or service to make more money. A product or service that improves consumers' lives. Their profits are determined by how much value they provide to consumers, which is the way it should be. And Wall Street is the same way. The more value you provide to clients, to businesses, to shareholders, the more money you theoretically will make. But they have one aspect that makes it quite different different. Where Amazon, Apple, and your local Italian restaurant make money from their delivery and streaming services, their technology products, and their pizza and pastas, the way Wall Street makes more money is through higher returns. Making money from money. The way you survive, the way you thrive on Wall Street is by getting the highest returns, and by any means necessary, as long as the SEC doesn't find out. The higher returns are what unlocks those 8 figure bonuses. The higher returns are what skyrockets your stock price. The higher returns are what gets the elite to invest their money with you. Everything is about making more money than the next guy and using that status to attract even more money. Wall Street's money comes from money. You're at the root of wealth creation, and your main objective is to get a seat at the big boy table by any means necessary. Your clients don't care how you do it, how you get your returns. They just want to see their money multiply. They just want to see that 9% return on their statements at the end of each year. It's cutthroat out there kill or be killed, and ethicality quickly gets thrown out the window. Because if your competitor earns a 9.25% return, while you earn 9%, everyone's investing with your competitor. No questions asked, you're going to be left behind. But let's say now your competitor, who's also trying to move up the ranks and make a boatload of money, were to cross the line break the law, and engage in insider trading, stock manipulation, pump and dumps, or price fixing to create a massive competitive advantage over you and any other competitors. And they end up with a 12% return after the fact, while you're playing everything by the books to get your mere 9% figure. 
Well, if you don't match them or exceed them, you're done. You're out of business. You won't get as many people to invest with you. You won't unlock those lucrative bonuses. You won't be able to move up in the ranks. Meanwhile, your competitor now starts to move up within the company and they get promoted to senior account executive within the investment banking part of your firm. A position you so desperately desire. A position that you put in 100 hours per week to obtain. And now you're thinking to yourself, if they were able to get away with it and achieve everything that I dream of and work so hard for. Get the position and salary that I want. Well, maybe I have to take that risk as well. If they did it and got everything that they wanted, then maybe I should too. So if you want to compete, you will have to do a little insider trading as well, just this one time. But as we all know, once you cross that line, one time becomes a regular occurrence, and a regular occurrence now becomes a part of your investment strategy. And it's a domino effect because the next guy will see what you're doing and follow you up due to the same fear of being left behind. They'll emulate what you did to reach the status that they also want. And now you're all playing the game of cat and mouse with the SEC, trying not to be the loser who gets caught. Now look, this may seem like a broad generalization to you. I mean, not everyone is insider trading and manipulating stocks on Wall Street? Sure. But once you start to get into those high seats at the table, once you start making conversation at the elite table, this is very much happening. Because the game of Wall Street is about attracting the most money to your fund, to your bank, and you do that through creating the highest returns. That's where the billions of dollars are going. Playing it safe and by the books only gets you so far on Wall Street, especially if you desire to get to the top and to make the big bucks. Look, once one person crosses that line to gain an advantage over others and to earn a higher return on their money everyone else will follow to compete and that mindset that approach especially from the top from the elite on wall street trickles down because as stated earlier the main motivation of people entering into wall street the main reason why people work day and night there is for the money the power the status so if the top dogs the leaders on wall street are doing it then you have to do it as well if you want to keep up if you want to reach their status if you want to sit at their table if you want to make their money that's the underlying root mindset and that's where we see the corruption start to happen now can this culture change can we improve wall street to prevent corruption or is it a culture where once you get into it there's no going back you become a part of it where wall street changes you you don't change wall street well here's where it gets interesting Nineteen twenty, the radio pool, an infamous moment where stock manipulators on Wall Street drove up the price of RCA stock, took their profits, and left every shareholder to fend for themselves as they sold off and let the stock tumble down. Mid 1960s, a group of major electrical manufacturers, including General Electric and Westinghouse, were convicted of a price fixing conspiracy to fix government bidding on electrical equipment. This fixing took place on Wall Street, and all companies involved were heavily fined. The largest fines of the time. 1970, the Mutual Fund Syndicate Investors Overseas Services, founded by Bernard Kornfeld, faced a prominent scandal as after investors began to sell off during a market downturn, Kornfeld was replaced with financier Robert Vesco, who was accused of looting the company and fund of $224 million and subsequently fled to the Caribbean. Vesco was then later sentenced to a 13-year prison sentence in Cuba. However, this was on unrelated charges. $224 million stolen from others, and he pretty much got away. 1986, Ivan Boski, the real-life Gordon Gecko who engaged in a risky type of speculation called arbitrage, agreed to pay back $100 million and pled guilty to insider trading violations. From this insider information, Boski made $65 million in 1984 when Chevron purchased Gulf and when Getty was purchased by Texaco. At his height, Ivan was managing over $3 billion within this insider 
Insider Trading Network. And to add the cherry on top, he ratted out Michael Milkins, the head of the junk bond operation at investment bank Drexel Burnham Lambert Incorporated, who along with his firm was charged with securities fraud since Bosky raised over $640 million in debt capital through Milken and Drexel and used that money to place arbitrage trades off insider information and many of which were bets on Drexel's buyout deals. As a result, Milken was ordered to pay $600 million in fines. Drexel went bankrupt while Milken was sentenced to 10 years in prison. 1999. Martin Frankel, a Connecticut money manager, was arrested after a four-month international manhunt where he was accused of stealing more than $200 million from insurance companies within five states and then using that money to buy mansions, cars, diamonds, and gold. 2009. Five trillion dollars in pensions, real estate value, savings, and bonds simply disappeared. Eight million people lost their jobs, six million lost their homes, and those figures are just in America. The entire world fell into economic depression due to the big banks and Wall Street's lack of care and remorse when it came to giving out extremely levered loans to unqualified, unsuspecting people since it earned them a boatload of money and commissions. Then, when everything collapsed, the big banks took all of that money and wrote out humongous 8-9 figure bonuses to upper management and lobbied Congress to kill any big reforms. Only one banker was arrested through all of this, and during the same time as the economy collapsed and everyone started to scramble and make calls for their money back, Bernie Madoff was caught and arrested, a man who ran one of the biggest Ponzi schemes to date, $65 billion from tens of thousands of unsuspecting individuals. Retirement funds, inheritances, trusts, and savings were completely wiped out. Bernie lived a high-class billionaire lifestyle while his victims lost everything they worked for, a common theme of the 2009 financial crisis. Additionally, another scandal resulted from the 09 crisis came in 2011 with Raj Rajatnam, former manager and founder of the Galleon Group, a multi-billion dollar hedge fund. He was one of the 400 wealthiest Americans at his peak, but all of a sudden, to everyone's surprise, it turns out his wealth came from insider trading. He was caught on wiretaps, offering people $2 million for this inside information, and in the end, he finally got caught from those wiretaps, the first ever use in white collar crime, and he was personally fined $92.8 million and had to forfeit another $53.8 million along with an 11 year prison sentence. And even more recently, in September of 2016, Wells Fargo, widely regarded as one of the most trustworthy banks in the industry, was exposed for their high pressure work environment that resulted in 2 million unauthorized accounts being created without customer consent to pump up their numbers commissions and stock price. Then, after a total of $3 billion in fines and numerous convictions, the CEO, John Stumpf, fired 5,300 employees, labeling them as, quote, a few bad apples within the company who didn't respect its values. And yet, shortly before all reports of the investigation went public, Stump resigned and walked away with $130 million. These are just a handful of scandals on Wall Street from as early as the 1920s to just several years ago. Billions of dollars in fines, billions of dollars in fraudulent earnings, billions of dollars in wiped out retirement accounts and savings, and these are just a few of the scandals. These are just a handful of the people and institutions who got caught. Imagine everyone else who got away with it and still continues to get away with it to this day. This culture, this identity of fraudulent and corrupt activities of the highest magnitude has been a part of Wall Street since its founding, from large institutions to individuals, which is interesting because usually culture changes as new leadership comes in. But corruption and scandals such as those stated previously have been occurring throughout Wall Street's history, through numerous leadership changes and numerous decades and continues to go on to this day. Thus comes the question. 
Does Wall Street change you? Is Wall Street's cutthroat culture so embedded within its roots that you simply can't do anything to change it? Instead, it changes you? It indoctrinates you? Well, as I said earlier, the culture of Wall Street revolves around who creates the biggest bag. Because that's who, for lack of a better term, everyone kisses ass to. If the top earners tell you to attend this party, you better go. If they tell you to stop being a baby and to snort that line of coke, you better do it. If they tell you to pass them some insider information, you have no choice but to say yes. You need to kiss their ass and be in good terms with them if you want to move up the ranks and reach their status. Otherwise, if you say no, the next guy will come in and take your place instead and you'll be left behind. If you want money, power, and status, you need to go and get it by any means necessary. Wall Street truly is an intriguing place. I mean, are the people that commit these white collar crimes corrupt even before they step foot on Wall Street? And it's just that the money and status that Wall Street provides them with then just increases the magnitude of their corruption? Or is Wall Street, the chaotic culture of Wall Street, and their sole focus on making money by any means necessary, the factor that turns people into these corrupt individuals who cause billions of dollars worth of damage and loss? Whatever the case may be, you simply cannot deny the facts and the history that Wall Street has its fair share of scandals and chaos, to say the least, at a rate much higher than any other industry, and it's been occurring ever since it was first founded. That one street is home to a trillion dollars worth of scandals and fraud, and that figure is only from what has been exposed and uncovered to the public. Imagine all of the other trillions of dollars worth of crime and fraud happening behind closed doors right now. So, can Wall Street change? Can the future investment bankers, CEOs, analysts, hedge fund managers, investors change the culture for the better? Remove the toxicity from it? Make it less corrupt? Or is Wall Street simply going to continue to do its thing like it has ever since it was founded, corrupting behind closed doors? So, can the future break the cycle of corruption on Wall Street? Or will history just continue to repeat itself?